So you've been granted access to an HPC cluster, but you've been told also that you needed to submit a job to Slurm, and you don't know what that means. Let me show you. So I am here connected to a Slurm cluster, and we'll be discussing how to gather information, how to create a submission script, how to submit the job, how to monitor and manage jobs, and also how to get some accounting information. As a reminder, a cluster is made of compute nodes that each offer resources such as CPUs, memory, disk, maybe GPUs, and those uh, compute nodes are organized into partitions. When a user or when you connect to the cluster, you will land on a login node, which is meant to manage files, to compile code, but not to run computations. Rather, computations must be submitted to a software called a scheduler or a resource manager for an attended batch submission. So your program will run on the computer in the cluster and you do not get to decide which computer that will be. That piece of software that organizes all of this is called Slurm. This tutorial will guide you through your first steps with Slurm. By the end of the video, you will be able to submit, monitor and manage jobs with Slurm. The first thing you'll want to do is to run the sinfo command. All Slurm commands start with an s as, as Slurm. The sinfo command will give you information about partitions. So partitions are logical sets of nodes that are grouped together either because they offer the same hardware or because they belong to the same policy. The sinfo command will show you the state of the partitions on the cluster. Here you see only one partition called debug that is up with no time limit. It comprises three nodes that all are sitting idle at the moment. And those nodes are named node one to three. So this syntax is a way in Slurm to write a list of nodes in a compact notation. Node 01-03 means nodes one to three. If you give s info the dash capital N and L parameters, you would get a list of the nodes. So you see here node 1, 2 and 3, both all of them being part of debug partition, sitting idle at the moment. And you see here the resources that they offer. Each offer two CPUs that are organized into two sockets, one core per socket, one thread per core, and the memory they offer here it's a bit less than one gigabyte you see TMP disk also is the uh, disk volume that they offer and the weight is an internal uh, parameter in Slurm that helps Slurm decide which nodes to choose um, in allocating for jobs the avail fe command is short for available feature and here no features are defined but most of the time on the clusters you will see that some features are de defined and features are characteristics of nodes. They can give information about the type of CPU or the type of network and so on. And here the last column, reason, is only valid when there are nodes that are down. And the reason column will give you information about the reason a node can be down. Before you can submit job, you will need to know which account you can charge the jobs to. The account you have access to can be seen with the sactmgr command. So sactmgr starts with an S, just like all Slurm command, and then ACCT means account and MGR means management. You use the set command list user dash S dollar capital user. Dollar capital user will be the environment variable that holds your user account. And you'll see a lot of information. Let's reorganize that information a bit so my username is dfr i am part of the defco default account department i'm not an admin i'm I have access to cluster named tux this is a list of other accounts i have access to there's only one here and you see here some other option like priority max jobs maximum nodes and some limits that my account is subject to. 
Another thing that is of interest is the quality of service. Quality of services um, are meant to implement policies s that can be requested for jobs to provide temporary benefits, for instance, higher priority, longer maximum more time, etc. Here you see two QSs, the normal QS that would be the one uh, allocated to your job if you don't request one specifically, and here the IP QS which is meant to give a boost of priority. But you see that this second QS has a limit associated to it of number of jobs per user. So there is no limit for the normal QS but for the IP QS only one job per user can have this QoS. A job is characterized by some resource requests, some parameters, a sequence of steps, each step being composed of parallel tasks or single commands. And all these elements are gathered in a submission script, which is a shell script, for instance a bash script, where the commands that start with as batch are interpreted by Slim as parameters. With the vim command, I will create a file called submit.sh. The first line will be a shebang stating that this is a bash script. As mentioned earlier, if a command in bash starts with as batch, it will be taken by Slum as a resource request or a parameter. Here, I will request two tasks, meaning that my program will be composed of two parallel tasks. I will also request that those tasks are dispatched on two nodes. And I will specify the memory per CPU, which I will set to 400 megabyte. I can also provide other parameters. All of these and tasks, nodes, member CPU are resource requests. Here I will specify a job name, which is not a resource request, but it's a parameter for slow. I could also specify a QS, for instance, but that's not necessary, or an account if I want the account to be the one that is not the default account. In this case, I would just leave it with the default account. I can give a single command, for instance, date, that will be run on the first node allocated to the job. And I can use the srun command to start the program on all the nodes or all the tasks that were allocated to the job. So here, let's run the osname command. The osname command is a Linux bash command that would just print out the name of the node on which the command is run. This will st create a first step in the job with two tasks, all of them running the osname command. If I run a second step with the second instance of srun, I can run ls, the ls command that will list the files in the directory. Now I can save this file check that it has the correct content and now i have a submission script which describes the job that i want to run in terms of resource requests other parameters we have two steps we also have each step comprises comprising two tasks and in a minute of it a single date command now that my submission script is ready, I can use the sbatch command to submit the job. With sbatch and then the um, submission script, I will submit that script to the scheduler. I can, if I want to, overwrite one of the parameters that were set 
in the submission script with something that I give in the command line. If I then hit enter, slum replies with a job ID. The job ID will be the identifier of the job that I will use in subsequent commands to modify the job, to monitor the job, and to get information about the job. My job has run now and in the home directory I see a slum-22-out dash dash file and 22 is remember the job ID that was assigned to a job. If I look into the contents of this file I'll see the output of all commands. The first one is the output of the srun hostname command you see that one task has been run on node 1 and the other task was run on node 2 and then you see both outputs of the ls commands and you see these ls commands showing exactly the same files and actually it's a requirement in Sloan that the same file system is visible from all compute nodes most of the time this is called the home file system let's see now how we can monitor the jobs as soon as you submit a job, it enters a queue. The previous job that we submitted was very short. So here we will submit a longer job. S batch submit stress, which is another submission script that I prepared before with a uh, process in it that actually consumes memory and uh, CPU. I can submit multiple times the same job and then I can use the SQ command to see the content of the queue and we see here that we have three instances of the job that have started on three distinct nodes if I submit a fourth one you will see that it enters a queue but in a pending state and you see here the reason why the job is the exact command will give you a list of the jobs that were submitted in the past by default it will only show the job for the day but you can give it a start date and there you have a list of jobs and you see dot batch here dot batch this is a job step this is a summary line for the job this is a summary line for the job step in the last jobs you see that this is the job this is the first job step which is the execution of the batch script and this is the uh, second job step that was created explicitly with the srun command you can also get information about a specific job for instance 27 that was cancelled let's see 26 with the dash l which is short for dash long and there you have a whole lot of information about the job which you can try to get in a more easy to see fashion with you see the job ID, job name, partition, max VM size, VM size nodes and so on, max RSS, so these are information about the memory consumption of the job you also have information about the CPU used in terms of uh, CPU usage, average CPU usage, you have the state and so on, a lot of information about uh, what your job has been doing in terms of writing just to disk, reading to disk and so on. You can use the dash x option to only list jobs and not all the job steps. Sometimes you want a more compact format and if you want to choose the columns that are shown to you, you have actually the opportunity to use the uh, format option. And this lists all the columns that you are able to choose. So in this video you've seen the basic commands of Slurm and you've seen how to gather information on the cluster, how to create a submission script and how to submit it to the scheduler, and you've seen how to have a look at the queue and get past uh, information. I hope this should get you started.